Hey GQ, this is Lakeith Stanfield and today I'm going undercover on the internet. You may not believe it, uh, but it's actually me. First up, YouTube. Lakeith Stanfield goes sneaker shopping with Complex. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. You know, the funny thing is, I'm not really like a sneakerhead. Like, I'm not really into that kind of stuff in that way. So I just looked at it as an opportunity to have fun. So no one is going to talk about how he pulled out a credit card from a shoe he wasn't wearing. Where did the shoe come from? <laughs> I had it on when I arrived. You do not walk the streets of New York with no shoes. That's the damn show. Keith Stanfield breaks down his fashion looks from Selma to Atlanta. How does one imbue numbers with intention? Same way you imbue anything else with intention. You just imbue it with intention. <laughs> For instance, I can imbue my intention into a work of literature, try and uh, hope to derive uh, something useful out of it. Basically just putting your energy towards something is really all it means. You know? Replied. What people think about you is in their mind, not yours. Wise man. What people think about you is in their mind, not yours, so. I don't really care that much. Yeah, there's a bunch of ideas people have about you all day, but you know, they kind of got to live with that more than you do. As you grow, you start to see that it doesn't really have as much an impact on things and how you feel as you thought when you were younger. Someone might judge you and say something about you when you're younger and it throws you into a frenzy for the rest of the day, week, year. But as you get older, you start to realize those things don't fucking matter. <laughs> Keith raps, I love him even more now. Why, thank you. I do. And I'm working on my first album right now, which is pretty exciting. And I kind of just want to get it out because it's a lot of personal stuff too, but yeah. Twitter. I know everyone wants to see him as a joker, but what about the Keith Stanford as the Riddler? I like this person. I like how this person thinks a lot. Have y'all ever seen the Keith Stanfield and Terrence Ross in the same room? Okay, the first time I heard Terrence Ross, I didn't know who he was, but now I kind of get where you're going with it, you know what I mean? I don't know if I feel like we look alike like that, but I feel where you're going. Reply. Watching the Quincy Jones doc on Netflix, and I can't stop thinking, is it me, or should Lakeith Stanford play a young Quincy in a biopic? Well, that would be quite an honor. I'd have to do some consulting with my spirits to see if that's something that's in the cards for me. He's cool, though. Quincy's awesome. So you're telling me that was a key stamp for the Snoop and Shadow Compton? That's what I'm telling you. It was me, bro. I didn't really get very much prep time at all. They were really looking hard for Snoop and just showed up and gave it my best um, that I could do. I met Snoop at the premiere. I sort of swam through a bunch of weed smoke and then finally found him. Yeah, he said, good job, nephew. So I got an uncle. Oh, wow, I'm actually drawing on the thing. That's crazy. Put a little happy face right next to it. Why does every character with Keith Stanfield play have a girl that can't get over him? <laughs> I don't even know how this this trend has happened. But I love love and showing the various stages of it. And breakup is just one part of it, you know. Break up to make up. Love is kind of universal for all of us. And it involves connections and pain and loss and gain and happiness and sex and all those cool things. Yeah. Boom! Which celebrity are you attracted to, but you can't explain why? I'll start with Keith Stanfield. <laughs> Thanks for that backhanded ass compliment. <laughs> no, I mean, I can't explain it either if I'm attracted to me. I'm not attracted to me. Post it. Out of nowhere, I've just become obsessed with the idea of a bumbling detective movie starring Keith Stanfield and Adam Sandler. Can I will this into existence? Please do. I just want to work with Adam again. He's amazing. Yeah, please do that. Pray for me. Of course, I grew up on Adam Sandler, man. I mean, I've, I've always been a fan. He's always been a, a great performer, very funny, very smart. He's like one of those people you think are your friends in your mind as you're growing up, and then, you know, God willing, you become friends with them in real life, which I've had the opportunity to do, which is quite amazing. What summer blockbuster are you willing to risk you and your family's health over? For me, it's got to be a superhero movie or something starring with Keith Stanfield. That's sweet, but don't risk your health. Stay home, wear a mask. It's quite nice though. Instagram. 
What class were you attending? Yeah, this is when we were in uh, rehearsals for Changers and Dance Stories by Joan, which we performed in New York a little over a week. And it was very, very awesome and cool and a great learning experience with Mia. And the team was just very talented. And I realized how athletic I need to be, how much I need to engage in physical activity. Those last couple of days were a bit grueling, but it was beautiful and I loved the experience. Oh, on Instagram, I could zoom right here from the screen, it's crazy. Wait, nobody's gonna ask him where he got the wig from because where did he get the wig from, bro? It's beautiful. There's this little place called Iguana in Studio City. That's where I got most of my wigs from in the early days. I believe around the time, I'm sorry to bother you. I bought a bunch of tickets and then hid them in wigs and hid them around the theater. It's sort of fun Easter egg kind of type thing. People did find the tickets. Um, either they found them or they blew away in the wind, but they weren't there when I went back. So something happened. Posted. Where can I buy this jacket? Coach. The yeah, coach was very kind and gifted me that jacket. It's a very beautiful one and quite comfy on the inside. That little fur thing works quite well to insulate the body. Atlanta star Lakeith Stanfield and Boondocks co-creator John Thomas are teaming up for Netflix original anime, Yasuke. What's your favorite anime? Oh man, I hate this question because I always feel like I'm not learned enough in anime. But right now I'm basic bitch, Dragon Ball Z. And uh, I like Death Note a lot too. Send me anime, I need to learn all of the ways. Oh, yeah, man. But I'm really excited about this project. It'll be another one in the can, hopefully, that people enjoy. Wikipedia. Keith Stanfield was born in San Bernardino, California on August 12, 1991, and grew up in Riverside and Victorville. Facts. This is all true. Yeah, it was a pretty small world. Um, I lived in small apartments and stuff. And so I moved to Victorville, we were able to get a larger house because it's cheaper. Um, but yeah, it was a pretty close knit type situation with me and the family. And then, you know, I always envisioned LA as like the big city or something. I was gonna go there and try and make my dreams come true. And I got here and it was a city, uh, but it wasn't quite everything <laughs> I'd imagined. Um, there would be a long sort of trek upward and falling and getting back up um, to try and, you know, secure my dream. But Keith Stanfield's first role was in the short film, Short Term 12, 2009. Yeah, that was my first official time on set. I've been shooting myself before, and with just like cameras laying around the house, but that was the first time that I really um, had stepped foot on a real set. It was, it was awesome. A year later, he had appeared in the short film, Gimme Grace, before giving up acting for several years. I don't know where this rumor came from that I gave up. Um, maybe it was a misquote or something by somebody, but I never gave up. I just didn't have means to continue to pursue. So I had to find ways to survive for a little while, um, and while I was still actively pursuing it. Yeah, I was working at AT&T and I got fired, but I had signed up. I moved to Sacramento and signed up on a film board out there. So the day I got fired, I checked the film board that I signed up to and saw that I had some messages from the director. And it was, um, and it was uh, Destin. And he was telling me about Short Term 12, the feature version. So, I guess the, the, the whole moral of the story is even when you're doing other things, actively still be seeking out what you're doing because you never know where the next opportunity may come. Personal life. Uh, Stanfield was a member of a band named Moores. Yeah, I created this little thing called Moores with my friend Rishi, who's um, a very talented musician. He has a podcast now called Song Exploder. We got along very well and were able to just string songs together nicely. I was mainly just a vocalist, you know, I'd like to convince myself that I'm instrumentalist as well, but just because you place a couple sounds <laughs> on the board doesn't mean you're really an instrumentalist. Uh, yeah, I was primarily a, a rapper. Now I sort of operate under Lakeith. Moore's will always be in my heart. Quora. Is Lakeith Stanfield overrated? <laughs> I don't know, you tell me. I don't even know how I'm rated. And probably underrated. What makes the Keith Stanfield such an interesting actor to watch? Perhaps I listen to my coworkers. Like when you're acting, I think an important thing is kind of listening. A lot of people overlook a little bit. It's hard to focus when you're acting a lot of time in scenes. And so one good way to focus is just to listen and really listen to what the person's saying, you know, like really be 
engaged and it gives you a point to focus and somewhere to go, you know. Otherwise, you're kind of just like a fish with his head cut off, just kind of just doing whatever you think the camera will want to see, which is also fun, but you know, I, I prefer to listen more. Next, why does the King Stanford look so sad? I guess I just wear it on my face, don't I? <laughs> No, you know, uh, I guess I just got resting, depressed face. I'm not really that sad. I mean, most times, you know. Should Lakeith Stanfield take a sip of wine? Should Lakeith Stanfield play Joker in the DCEU? That's up to you guys. Make your voices heard. Go out and vote. But after you vote, vote for me as Joker in the DCEU. IMDB. Trivia. Got his first agent by doing a surfer skit. Yeah. I just jumped up in the chair and started doing some surfer stuff, you know? Whatever I thought was a surfer, which clearly surfers don't do what I did, <laughs> but I guess it just tickled the, the agent enough to um, arouse his interest in me. So he signed me, I was very surprised and very happy. And I would start going on um, commercial auditions. Those were the first auditions I went on and I never booked anything. <laughs> But I learned how to like deal with auditions, so that was a good thing. Reddit. I like Reddit. Ryan Coogler produces Jesus Was My Homeboy, starring Daniel Kaluuya, Lakeith Stanfield, and Ashton Sanders. Is this movie an adaptation of Rapping for Jesus? I'm not sure what that is, so no. It's about Fred Hampton, the life of Fred Hampton, who um, was a brilliant, brilliant, beautiful human being that stood up for the truth and was murdered by people who couldn't handle the truth. Uh, I'm excited about this one, I really am. Especially in these times, it'd be nice to communicate with people in this way. Identification, can anyone help me identify the watch worn by the Keith Stanfield and Knives out? I've searched and can't find any information. My husband loves it. I wish I could, I don't know. It was big though, and I'm quite skinny. So it's hard to keep it from sliding up my arm. <laughs> I think I had to put like some little styrofoam in there or something to keep it right, but yeah, it's nice if you're thick. GQ, thank you so much. Thank you everyone for watching. Um, that, was, that was pretty fucking fun. I'm signing out off of the internet for the rest of eternity. <laughs> I'm gonna keep this.